Hello friends, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for stopping by today. And today I am in Luminar Neo. I've got a photo that I took one morning. It was a beautiful sunrise in Madeira on the Luminar adventure there that was back in May of this year. And uh, I think it's, it's a fairly common image uh, in terms of landscapes, right? Which is a little bit darker foreground, a little bit lighter sky. It's sunrise, the light is in the sky, and of course the foreground is a little bit darker. And what I want to do is walk through and share some ideas, some tips and tricks to show you how to edit an image like this. Because there are certain things that I do in Illuminar that work every time, really. It's just a, um, a method that I approach a photo with, and it just pays off because uh, I think it's simple, it's straightforward, it's easy to use. Now there's a lot of things to think about, and there's a lot of tips and tricks and ideas. Um, by the way, if you don't yet have my free ebook about Luminar Neo, you can get it at the link below. It's available to anyone that subscribes to my uh, email newsletter, and it contains a lot of these ideas, a lot of tips and tricks, and it's free. So check it out if you're interested. Let's get into the photo. Now here it is, like I said, uh, straightforward, right? A little bit darker in the foreground, a little bit brighter in the sky, which of course is where the light is. Now, when I start out, um, I want to look at the photo, and one of the first things I notice, of course, that you would notice as well, is that it's a little bit too dark. Now, a way to go about that is raising the exposure, but what I actually ended up doing here is actually lifting the shadows, and I went pretty high. I think I went to about a 65, and now you can see the visibility in the photo is way better, of course, because I brightened the shadows, uh, but overall, it just looks a lot better. And so, even though I'll often come in and play with exposure on a dark image, Consider playing with the uh, with the shadows first because it can make a difference. Uh, and in fact, I ended up actually dropping the exposure slightly on this photo and adding some contrast. And I went to high 30s in that one. And then I took the highlights down a bit, uh, about halfway. So like 47, 48. Looking pretty good, honestly. I mean, before and that is basically what it looked like because, of course, the dynamic range of the human eye is quite a bit better than these cameras. Now I also adjusted the temperature and you might think that I would warm it up because it's a sunrise, you want those nice warm tones to come through. And I do want those nice warm tones to come through, but I tend to actually cool off images like this. So I'm gonna drop this to 4676. That was just the number I ended up with somehow. And so I basically just cooled it off even though it's a sunrise and there's a lot of warmth. Now there's a method to that madness and the method is that um, I like to play that color contrast of the warm and cool off of each other. And the water's cool, the top of the sky is cool, but the sunrise and that center along the horizon is warm. And these rocks are going to be warmer. And that's one of the things that we're going to be working on. Um, I also bump up the vibrance to, you know, maybe a five. Um, I do not recommend doing a lot of color work in Develop Raw. Now, I do adjust temperature and sometimes tint. I rarely do anything with saturation. In fact, I almost make it a rule to leave saturation at zero, and occasionally I'll bump up vibrance a tiny bit, and I'm going to go to about a 20 on sharpening. So before and after, already a much improved uh, photo. Uh, my next one is super contrast, and this is the second thing I want to talk about, and, that, and I talk about this a lot in a lot of videos, and that's because it's the tool that I use second just about every single time. That's because I think it complements what you do with Develop Raw so well. And so as you can see here, I'm just kind of moving things around. And of course, I edited this before I um, started the video, so I already kind of have my notes about what numbers to go to. Uh, so the numbers are not really important. What's important is what's happening to the light, and every photo is different. So don't even worry about the numbers. What I usually do is take the, the contrast sliders for each of these three zones, highlights, midtones, and shadows, move them to about 25, 30 maybe, see what it does, and then I play with the balance in each section and see what I end up with in terms of how I like the distribution of light after applying this tool. So before and after, you can see, if you look at the sky, there's a quite a bit more contrast in the sky. You can see the clouds are a little bit darker, and now a little bit lighter, almost a little bit smoother, and it kind of evened out the light overall. It fixed the contrast, right? So it made it a little bit flatter, perhaps, so before and after but I like it. I think it looks really good. Now, I see a couple of spots in the sky. I'm going to go ahead and take those out because they're annoying me and they may be annoying you. And then we'll jump back into the rest of this edit. I love that one click. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Absolutely love it. So uh, the next thing I want to do, and this is really my editing approach, and I've talked about this in countless videos. I talk about it in that ebook that hopefully you have by now, 
but I, I edit based on light and then detail and then color. Now, having said that, my editing process is also a bit fluid. So I use that as kind of a guide. Uh, it's, it kind of gives me a roadmap for my edit, but it's not a uh, absolutely only do this and then only do that and that sort of thing. So I try not to be rigid in my approach, but I do like to have an approach. Um, the next thing I want to do is light related, and that is I want to brighten up those rocks a little bit. And this is where you start going into masking. And what I end up doing on this photo, and really a lot of photos, is I use the develop tool again and again and again because it's the best tool in Luminar and it's super powerful. It's got so many things you can do. So I'm going to go in here and grab all these rocks and highlight them. And that's what I love about this object select. It's just fantastic. I just grab these things and boom. And there we go. I've basically now masked. I don't know why it missed that one little spot. There we go. Um, I don't know why it missed those little sections, but it did, but that's okay. And what I want to do is a little bit more uh, exposure here to increase that um, visibility into that part of the foreground because the sun is shining onto these rocks and I want to accentuate that. I also add a slight temperature bump, just a two, I think, here, and a slight tint bump as well. And here I actually go to 11. Uh, ooh, Spinal Tap reference, it goes to 11. There it is before and there it is now. Now keep in mind, um, the sun is shining in, hitting those rocks. I want to play that up in this edit. So this is thinking about the light, but that also impacts the colors. I added a little bit of warmth and tint. I'm going to do more things with this mask and with these, um, these rocks to really accentuate the overall mood in the photo. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is go over here and copy that mask because I'm going to use it again. So copy, and then I can just close develop. And now I'm going to go over to structure AI and masking, mask actions, and paste. So if I click show, there it is. Copying and pasting masks, one of the easiest uh, things to do and super helpful in Luminar because you can just uh, not have to recreate the wheel. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add some positive structure to them there. Rocks, things that are close to you, um, and things like this that occur in nature, I like to add structure to because Closer it is, you would expect to see that have, have more appearance of detail in it. And of course, the rocks, so they already are kind of crunchy by definition. I think Structure AI is the perfect tool for that. Now, the other thing I want to do is close Structure AI, open it again, and this time I'm just going to remove a structure from the sky. And this is a linear gradient trick uh, that I like to use. Yes, I could have used Object um, Select, I could have used the sky uh, mask, but I prefer to use a linear gradient when a sky is like this because I kind of want to fade it into the horizon. I don't want it to uh, figure out what it thinks the horizon is for me. Um, and that's just because I like to be in control um, most of the time. Like on Object Select for those rocks, totally work fine. But on something like the sky, I just, I don't know. Habitually, I just kind of do it myself. And a linear gradient, boom, done, it's easy. So before, after, all I did is smooth it out a little bit, and I'm not even sure that you can tell by looking at it. So at this point in the edit, I was thinking, you know, I need a little bit more of a pop, a little bit more umph. It was a beautiful sunset. I want to bring that up. Well, one of the great tools in Luminar is Accent AI, and I use it a lot. And I always recommend that you use it with a mask and that you use it sparingly. Because if you just start doing these kind of things, you can see what's happening. It's basically doubling up and tripling up on top of the edits I've already done. And it doesn't look that good. So what I ended up doing is going to about 32. And I like that, but it's too much. And so what I want to do is use a... Uh, luminosity masks. So these are the best masks ever. I absolutely love them because they're based on light values and you control the light values with this little bar here. And so what I'm going to do is just move this and compress that tonal zone into more of the midtones and then fade it into the highlights a little bit and fade it slightly into the shadows. Just a little bit into the shadows and pull that back a little bit to get away from some of the shadows. If you noticed, before I applied the mask, but I did drag the slider on Accent AI, it impacted the rocks quite a bit. It really brightens them, it adds that detail, and it really pops them. The rocks are, they're going to get enough work, and so I'm trying to remove that mask from the rocks mostly uh, and keep it kind of in those areas. Um, and let me show you what this looks like now. There, so let me show you before and after. Before and after, you can see the rocks aren't really impacted, but what is impacted nicely, I might add, is the sky. So before and after, I just think that looks really nice. It's really subtle. And if you look at the before, 
and then the after it's almost like it polarizes the sky a little bit slightly darker there so i love to do that it's just a compressing that luminosity mask into the midtones with Accent AI, just uh, just an absolutely fantastic move that I love to do on just about every photo, probably. Okay, I'm gonna play a little bit with color here, and I'm gonna take up brilliance, and let's do about an eight or so. I don't want it to be too much because I've already used a little bit of color stuff, and impacting uh, color is impacted when you're adjusting contrast and light. So I always try to keep that in mind. And I'm gonna go negative 20 here, um, and so I'm making it a little bit cooler. But again, we're going to do some things to, to warm up some of that, um, uh, that overall look, um, which includes right here in highlights and color balance. And I'm going to do about a four on the red. And so this is just targeting the brighter parts of the photo, adding a little bit of red. And I'm going to do a negative six over here, which is just a little bit of magenta. So now if you look at the colors before and after, right, before and after because i added that to the highlights it picks up a little bit more glow in the brighter parts of the sky including underneath these clouds and also the rocks pick up a little bit before and after where the light is hitting these rocks they're getting a little bit more saturated here which i think looks nice because that's what's happening the light is hitting those parts of the rocks and i'm kind of playing that up here's the thing light detail color we've done all that but I never feel like I'm really done with the light. So I'm constantly going back and doing things around the light. And that's what I want to do now. I'm going to go into develop. And what I want to do is get a radial gradient. And this is something I do with suns. Usually if it's really big and blown out, I will just do this in a, in a large way. I'm doing it kind of gently here. But I just put a radial mask on the sun. And all I'm going to do is just slightly increase that exposure. So like at 0 0.15, 18, whatever it is and add some contrast, which kind of um, creates a little bit more of a haze, essentially. So if you look at the before and the after, that looks a little bit more natural to me as the sun is kind of coming over those clouds on the horizon, and you get a little bit of a glow, a little bit of a haze from that sunlight. So before and after, just a nice little trick I like to do with my suns. Okay, now I'm going to go on to Mystical, another great tool. And by the way, you'll notice up here in Favorites, I've got quite a few favorites. Uh, this is essentially, all you do is if you have a favorite tool down here in one of these categories, you just right click and add to favorites and it'll pop up here into this favorites section. And they're up there because I use them a lot. And essentially it's kind of like creating your own workspace. So try that. And if you decide you don't want it, you can just right click and remove from favorites. So it's, it's quick and easy, but I've been doing that. The only thing I wish I could do is rearrange the order of them here and I can't. They show up in the order here in the same order that they show up in the stack down below. So it is what it is. It's still quicker. Uh, and what I want to do is get a uh, little bit of this happy mystical applied to my photo. Now, mystical softens things up. It adds some contrast, adds a little bit of mood. It goes great, I think, with sunrises, sunsets, blue hours, twilights, golden hour. It just has a little bit of shadow, a little bit of fun. It's mystical. It's just fantastic. Um, kind of a little bit of romantic lighting is the way I think of it. But if you look at the before and the after, um, I like kind of what is done in the foreground, not as much in the sky. So there's a couple of ways that you can adjust that. I could just add it with a radial, excuse me, a um, linear gradient into the foreground. But actually what I'm going to do is actually go in and use luminosity mask again. But this time I'm just going to remove it mostly from the highlights. So that's going to keep most of the foreground in play. And I ended up doing something about like this. Uh, where I drop it like that and then kind of blend, if I can get that little triangle, there we go, and kind of blend it in to where I'm getting a little bit up there in the top of the sky, but not too much, and maybe pull this back a little bit. There you go, something about like that. And so now mystical before and after, before and after, is impacting those rocks and some of the darker water, but not really the bright part of the water where the sun is uh, shining. So that was the benefit of the luminosity mask, it essentially isolated that area uh, or removed it from the mask, right? So before and after, and if you're not familiar with masking, again, in my free ebook, I have lots of uh, information about masking. And of course, I do have a masking masterclass course available on my website. If you wanna check that out, it's just gemnex.com. But luminosity masks, absolutely fabulous. I love them, I use them all the time, probably every image because, you know, it's a mask based on light values. This whole photo is a light, so um, I, I just it just makes sense to me. Um, now, one of the things I look at here is I think it's still too bright at the top of the image, 
and that's where the light is. And so it makes sense, but I want to kind of frame it a little bit. So for me, this is where I like to come in with a linear gradient across the sky. And I'm going to make it kind of wide, maybe something about like that, and maybe move it up a little bit. And then I just want to come in and just drop that exposure. And so you'll see what that's happening. It's kind of like a polarizer in the sky, kind of like I talked about earlier. But before and after, it just kind of frames it a little bit. Um, what it does is it'll... Um, in addition to kind of framing it, it kind of calls out, uh, maybe add some emphasis to the horizon where the sun is coming, and it uh, kind of keeps it from getting lost in the other bright part of the sky. So, I don't know, by darkening that, you're kind of focusing more on that bright part. So before and after, I like to do that. And then the last thing is just a color move, and that's why I said I, I prefer to do light detail color, but sometimes I'll come back and do touch-up things like on the light, like I just did, uh, as well as on the color. And in this case, for color, I'm going to go into the actual color tool where you get into HSL. I'm going to start in the H, which is hue. And what I want to do here is take that orange, and this is going to be, uh, oh, you know what I'm going to do first? I need to go mask, mask actions, and paste. Let me hit show. I still had that mask, the object select mask for all the rocks, copied in my clipboard because I hadn't copied any other mask. I had made other masks, but you could, once you copy it, if you don't do anything with it, if you don't copy other ones, it just sits there. So it's been sitting there the whole time, which is kind of handy. Uh, anyway, I just pasted it. So now I'm back on those rocks. And what I want to do is play with that hue on the orange and the yellow. So the orange is going to go like a negative 10 or 11. And that's just going to make it a little bit more orange. And the yellow is going to go like a negative 25, 26. It's going to make it a little bit more orange and less yellow. So it's not a huge difference, but before... And after, I don't even know if you, if you can really even tell, uh, but the thing that you will be able to tell here is the luminance. And so because the sun is coming in and beaming, I want that orange luminance in the rocks to be a little brighter. So I'm going to brighten that orange. So like a plus 25, right, before, after. You can see where that's kind of this rock and right along in there and that sort of thing. But the thing that makes a big difference for me is I actually take the luminance of the yellow and I started dropping it and then I ended up dropping it all the way and I end up really liking the way that looks on the rocks. So before and after, you can see quite a bit of yellow is actually showing up in those rocks. So I brighten the uh, orange, but I darken the yellow. And that kind of makes sense because a lot of the yellow is in these areas, which I don't know if you can tell from this perspective, but they're kind of tilted up and I'm shooting kind of down towards the coast, which means the sun that's just coming up is probably not hitting over the top and the back of these rocks, so they should be a little bit darker. So that's why when I dropped that luminance of the yellow, I think it had a nice impact. So before and after, it also creates a little bit more contrast because contrast is the difference between bright and dark. So the yellow tones that are in those rocks have gotten a lot darker. The orange ones got brighter, so it plays up that contrast. So before and after, and that was really it. The only other thing I might would do is come in with a vignette and do something kind of gentle and I don't think I would use inner light as much as I like it, and I like it a lot. Um, I don't really know that I would use it here because the, the center, I think, is plenty bright. So I think I would just skip that, although I'd normally use it. And I would just come in. Actually, I, I would like a little bit rounder, and I like high feathering, and maybe a little adjustment on the size as well. But vignette, just kind of focusing the viewer in on the center of the photo, helps frame it a little bit better. And that is how this one went. So light, detail color, masking, light again, more masking, light again, a color again, all that sort of stuff. So many different steps, but in reality, they're simple, easy. Uh, they're simple, they're easy, they're straightforward. And even with the masks, you just experiment, you figure out what works. But for me, the thing that works best is to kind of back up, slow down. And if you're unsure how your edit looks, go back into the catalog and look at it in a, a smaller view, right? So you can change the, the size here to uh, the view that you want. But like I look at that and I'm like, okay, that looks pretty good. And yes, this was a bunch of bracket sets I was shooting. Didn't really need to um, edit this as an HDR. Uh, super happy with the result. But sometimes I'll just back away or leave the computer and come back. But the bottom line is there's a couple of different ways to kind of make sure that it looks good. And speaking of looking good, let's take a look at the before and after. This is my handy little uh, sliding window. We've had a massive, massive impact on the color, the light, the overall kind of shape of the the key elements in the photo, including detail, went from that to that. And that's it. You just stack these little edits again and again and again, and you end up with something that you really like. In this case, I really like that one. 
Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas. Check out my free ebook. If you don't have it yet, you'll get more ideas from that. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back really, really soon. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.